morning. Today is actually my birthday. And I was thinking this morning as Luke was leaving how excited I am that we even started this vlog just so we could document the things going on in our lives right now. And I was just thinking, you know, when it's your birthday, you start reminiscing over all the things that you've done and the years ahead. And one of the things that just comes to me is just how thankful I am for everything. Even though we've only got about 12 videos posted for Camp David, we haven't really let you know who each of us are in Camp David. So I thought today on my birthday, I would share a little bit about myself, some of the things about me and going on in my life. First of all, I am a Colorado native and I was raised on a cattle ranch in the eastern plains of Colorado. So I had more of a country upbringing than anything else. And the lifestyle was amazing. Um, I have a lot of fun memories on, on the ranch. That was just a small part of my life. I am somebody who loves athletics. I love playing sports. I played volleyball, um, basketball, um, anything that has to do with sports, I'm there and I absolutely love it. The other thing that I absolutely love is adventure, excitement. I love having fun. I like going out and trying new things. I love the outdoors. Um, and as you have seen in some of our previous videos, I love the kitchen. I am the most comfortable and in my space is the kitchen. So I love being able to fix meals, whether it's savory or baking. Baking is also a huge joy of mine. I did it for a little while in Illinois, had my own at-home baking business. So cooking and entertaining, that's the other thing that absolutely fills me with joy is entertaining and hosting events and opening up our home and just having people come in and being able to have fun and socialize and themes. One of my biggest passions is the kids' birthdays. Luke accuses me of going a little over the top, but I just love having fun and letting the kids pick a theme and really going and running with it. That's a little bit about me. If you were to ask my parents about my personality or even Luke or the kids about my personality, I would um, say that they probably say I'm a little bit of a, a fighter. I don't like being told no. I don't like hearing the word no like you can't do that. I like to be able to do things and, and feel like I am not having limits. That brings us to another thing that has become a part of my life in about the past three years. And I've been trying to figure out a way to share it on the vlog because it is a part of me, but it's not the easiest thing for me to talk about. Let's see how this goes. I don't know. Hang on. One thing that has become part of my life is three years ago, after I had sinus surgery, um, I started to develop pain in my leg. It was a couple of days after my surgery. The surgery that I had on my sinuses wasn't anything that bad, so it shouldn't have caused any difficulty or anything, but I started to notice pain. And I mentioned it to Luke, and we went and got it checked out, and they sent me over to the hospital to have a ultrasound done on my leg. Believe it or not, and to my shock, I found out I had DVTs, which are blood clots in both my legs, deep vein thrombosis in both legs, and they immediately started admitting me to the hospital. Since they found out that I had blood clots in my legs, they went ahead and did a CT, and we found out that I had multiple pulmonary embolisms in my lungs, which that pretty much said means that I had multiple blood clots throughout both of my lungs. And upon the emergency room doctor telling us that, it made me stop and think. And, and we were told I was very fortunate because each of those clots that had um, gone to my lungs could have very easily gone a different route and gone straight to my heart, could have gone to my brain. So at that moment, I even felt God is so good. God had his hand over me. Through my childhood, I have dealt with fear a lot um, most of my life. I, 
I was fearful of so many things, fear of the unknown, and even becoming a parent when I had Kenya, fear would come in. I was always afraid of when she gets sick, is she going to be okay? And then when Lincoln came along, and just the fears of being a parent. And through my time in building my relationship with Christ, I've learned to replace that fear with faith. And that's become a big part of my life now. And sitting in that emergency room, some of that fear crept back in, fear of knowing that I could have died. And and knowing that I was still clotting. So we started blood thinners and they got us with specialists. I eventually went home thinking, okay, I've got this whole thing put behind us. But we were then left with, well, why? And at first the doctors just said, well, as weird as it sounds, and even though your surgery wasn't that major, maybe it was an offset of the surgery. We're going to keep you on blood thinners for three months and then we'll go ahead and take you off. I did have some difficulty with the blood thinners, ended up um, bleeding out and having to get iron infusions after that because the iron that they were giving me in the pill form, my body was not absorbing it. So even Eventually, I was still anemic enough that I then had to go through rounds of iron infusions for two months. And along this journey, something just kept telling me, something's still not right. It's not right. Still working with the doctors, they weren't giving me too many answers. They really didn't seem that concerned. I still had this little voice in my head saying, something's wrong. I don't feel quite right. But I had this other thing going on, and it was God speaking to me, saying, have peace. I've got this. And the thing that kept going through my mind the most was, you're going to be okay. Throughout the next year, um, we had a few things happen still. They took me off of the thinners and I was having to learn to trust my doctors. And I also had to learn to exercise my faith in God that even though I wasn't on the thinners, it really tested my faith knowing that he had his protection over me. It is God's plan and we're going to get answers in his timing. Eventually down the road, I had had a little bit of chest pain, but I didn't think much of it. And it was actually a year from the time that I had my first clot episode. Um, I just called my doctor and they said, well, why don't you come in and we'll check it out. And they sent me over to the hospital again for a CT. And sure enough, they came in the room and they said, you have a clot in your lung. And at this point, I, I was feeling hurt. I was feeling like I could not trust anyone because the doctors had said, oh no, you'll be fine. We're just going to take you off of thinners. And at that point, Luke and I realized we really needed to start searching for more answers because it wasn't just a fluke thing. The other thing we found out while I was in the hospital for that time, my thyroid was not functioning either. Um, my thyroid levels were extremely low. So I went ahead and started seeing a specialist on top of that for my thyroid and found out I've got nodules and Hashimoto's in my thyroid. The blood clot answers were not that easy to get. We started to see um, a hematologist and try to get answers. There's asking them what other things could it be that's causing me to clot. So I started on thinners again. They started running tests and I started testing negative for all the things, the common things that they thought. And throughout this time, Luke and I, once again, we're just doing life. I'm trying to be a mom, trying to be a good wife to Luke. And the move came up, the notorious move that you guys keep hearing about. So we went through that and I knew through that there was a little bit of frustration there knowing that I'm going to have to start with a whole new team of doctors, having to try and call, having to try and go over the visits, tell them all the details again. I feel like I'm constantly having to tell my story over and over again to these doctors. And I always wonder, are they really listening to me? So at that point, it was like, we're going to start all over again. But once again, God came in. It was just peace. It was like, I've got this. Just let this go. And when Luke and I brought the decision of relocating and him taking the job in Colorado, we prayed and we prayed and we wanted to make sure that this just wasn't a job move, but this is what God's path wanted us to do. And God opened those doors so wide and made it so evident that Colorado was where we were supposed to go. It revealed itself in one of these ways. Once I got into my new specialists in Colorado, they were asking me questions that none of my other doctors in Illinois had ever even asked. We were running tests that I had never had run, making sure my heart is okay. We had waited two years and we still had no answers. I was just sick and just thinking I'm going to have to learn how to deal with surviving a blood clot and having a clotting disorder, even though we didn't have a diagnosis. Within a week of being with the team in Colorado, we got a diagnosis. 
And to know that God had doctors lined up for me here, he had more answers for me in Colorado, was amazing. I just had to be patient. It was in God's timing. So the diagnosis came out as... APS or antiphospholipid syndrome. It's also known as lupus anticoagulant and it's actually a really rare clotting disorder. It's very hard to diagnose. So with the diagnosis of APS it does mean that I am on blood thinners for life and they don't know a whole lot about it but I did find out that my two children that I have are a huge miracle and a huge blessing. Most people who have APS are unable to have children. To be able to have children is very rare. It causes so many complications. So when I did find that out, I saw another way that God had so blessed Luke and I with these two kids. In a dark moment, I started looking for silver linings. After that, it's like, okay, what's this mean? What's my life? How do we deal with this? And with autoimmune disorders, always comes with fatigue, comes with joint pain, and all the symptoms of the clotting. And it explained a lot of the stuff I had been having for the past three years in my life. At that point, I felt a little bit defeated when they were explaining to me about um, this disorder and that there's no cure for it. And it's something I've just got to live with and start accepting my life, how it's going to be, start accepting that I might not be able to do as much as what I wanted. And then when you find out you're on blood thinners for life, that's a whole other thing because they start factoring in the risk of a bleeding um, incident or if you're in an accident. And the thinners that I am on, it is not the Coumadin or anything, it's Xeralto. And with Xeralto comes the fact that there is no antidote. You have to wait for it to get out of your system. So if you are in an accident or you have an issue within that 24 hour period of taking your medicine, there's not a whole lot they can do for you at that point, except for just wait it out and hope for the best. All these things were being rushed in on me. And earlier in my life, before I truly knew Christ, I always dealt with fear. And fear started to push in again. Some of the, the doubts of, well, what's this mean for me? How's my life gonna be? When you deal with blood thinners, you always have that fear of if something ever happens, are they gonna be able to help me? It kept coming back to, I had to put my faith and trust in God. He's got this no matter what. No amount of living my life in fear is going to make it any better. So after I got that diagnosis, I went home. I sat and I thought a while. I talked to Luke about it and I made a decision at this point that I am not going to let APS take over. If anything, I'm going to take over APS. And that's how I've just kind of taken it on. I'm a fighter and I'm not going to go down without a fight with this. Do I have bad days? Absolutely. There are days that I am so tired. And with the Hashimoto's and the thyroid problem on top of it, it doubles your fatigue. But the fatigue that I deal with on certain days, it's disheartening at times. I want to go out and do all the activities that I used to do and work out as hard as I used to work out and my body is just not having it anymore. And I do. I feel like I'm in a fight with my body. And there are times where I've had to learn that I've got to take care of myself. I've got to be able to have energy to do certain things. But that does not mean that I am defeated. I do believe God has his hand in this. And I do believe that there is a purpose for this. So I've taken the attitude that I'm not going to let this beat me. And even though I feel tired, and on the days that I wake up and I'm so tired and I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to function, I do try and tell myself, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And also, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I try and keep that in my mind. I'm not really one to say, oh, by the way, I have this wrong with me. I don't share about it a lot and doing this now is even hard and the reason being is I don't like to be a complainer. I don't like to have excuses for why I'm not doing things or why I'm unable to do things. It goes back to I don't like hearing myself being restricted. So today on my birthday, I've reflected a lot still about what's going on with my body because that brings us to today. And we have a few more things going on. April of this last year, I started noticing um, heart palpitations and I kind of thought, eh, you know, I'm getting older. And with everything else, my thyroid, I started wondering if it's my thyroid because it can it can do that. In May, I had a follow up with my hematologist team and my pulmonologist team. 
and they did look and one of the clots that I had um, two years ago is still there it never dissolved and that causes I guess a whole other diagnosis at that point when a clot doesn't dissolve so it's there to stay and they said it's okay we just have to keep an eye on it it can cause difficulties later on down the road but we're gonna keep a really close eye on it it's really important that um, you really get cardio in get your heart nice and strong because then that makes it even harder for it to affect your heart later on down the road because eventually it starts weakening your heart and I'm like okay I can do this and still I probably haven't got my workout routine down to as much as what I've I would really like to but it goes hand in hand with this fatigue I work out and I'm out for two days because my body is so mad at me about what I did April I started having these palpitations and I let my team know about it and they're like okay we'll keep an eye on it over the past couple months it has gotten worse and worse and over the past three weeks I've had stints where I'm just sitting there not doing anything and the room like spins and I almost pass out. Come to find out my heart rate keeps dropping extremely low and then it keeps spiking um, and this was all through the glorious little ability of my Apple Watch that my cardiologist could look at this. So I saw the cardiologist 10 days ago and they wanted to admit me and I talked them into can we go another route with this? I really don't want to sit in the hospital for two days while you look at you know monitor my heart. And so they came up with this I have this halter monitor on carry this with me and I also have so this is part of the monitor I have to wear it for two weeks so I'm gonna turn it in the day before we get on the Disney cruise and they've been monitoring my heart and I have to mark it but the other thing why they let me go is somebody 24 7 is watching my heart to make sure that there's not something going on that I need immediate attention for. Good thing is my phone has not rang <laughs> in the past 10 days. So that's where we're at now. We're gonna wait and get some answers. They're gonna meet with me after we get back from our trip. And then the other thing is when I went into my primary care physician, they're just concerned with my autoimmune and my thyroid, all that I'm dealing with, and the very long history on both sides of my family of cancer. Both of my grandmothers had breast cancer. They've both had multiple other cancers along with my grandfather's. Um, unfortunately, my mom is suffering from cancer right now too. My doctor is suggesting that I go to a cancer screening specialist. They are running tests to see if I carry the genes and what my percentage is of possibly developing breast cancer in the future. And they're gonna sit down with me and talk about that. So that is my health journey. I didn't make this video to depress anybody. I didn't want to discourage anybody. And I want myself even to be able to look back at this video and know God's hand is in this all over. And ultimately it's his plan. And that's how I truly find peace about this. In the hard days, is this fun? Absolutely not, but I know that there are so many more people out there that have it so much worse than I am that are battling so many worse things. This is my battle God has put in my life, and I am going to take it as a challenge, and as long as I have him in it, it will not beat me. And I am constantly looking for how God can use this for even other people. And for my family that is with me, Luke and the kids, my in-laws, my parents, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law, for all of you that have to put up with the days that I'm tired or you guys hear about this from me, I just wanna thank you for your support. And for anyone out there that is dealing with any kind of autoimmune or sickness, I pray that God just has strength and blessing over you that you find the strength that you need to get through your struggle and know that you can do this and even God just has such a greater plan than what we can ever even imagine. Thank you for letting me share with you and thank you for watching.